My name is Marcel Heinrichs and I am Director of Product and Market Development with S&P Capital IQ, focused on credit risk services. The dramatic drop in oil prices has been shaking the energy sector for a while now. In fact, our research shows that around 50% of high yield defaulters are from that sector. And this percentage may increase further, especially as more and more previously arranged future options come close to their expiry date. But what is the impact on oil producing countries? How are entire economies affected by the current oil prices? And how does this affect their country risk and sovereign risk? In this two-part video series, I will focus on the countries that were identified as oil price losers in a recent study by the IMF, CIA and the CME Group, each with a first order decline in GDP from anything between 1% for Bahrain to a staggering 25% for Libya. Before we begin our look at these top oil price losers, I would like to introduce S&P Capital IQ's Country Risk Intelligence and Surveillance Framework, which takes structural, market and event indicators and aggregates them into a composite country risk rank, something that is unique and meaningful in our industry. This framework covers a large variety of 30 plus different country risk indicators, of which we show only a few here. Indicators are separated into three groups. The first group are structural indicators, which measure long-term views of different types of country risk, ranging from sovereign default risk via Standard & Poor's rating services to long-term country risk scores by S&P Capital IQ, which assess the risk of doing business in a country. The second group are market indicators, that contain daily changing information from the market, including sovereign credit default swaps, foreign exchange rates, or S&P Capital IQ's country risk premia for credit exposure and equity investments. These premia are expressed in basis points and serve as benchmarks for the return on an investment abroad that is expected as a compensation for the systemic country risk that one faces with this investment. The third group are ground truth indicators. These are based on geopolitical risk events that are collected from news feeds, categorized in different types ranging from anything like a military attack, the visit of an official or the provision of economic aid, and finally assessed by their severity impact as a hostile, neutral or cooperative event. Finally, all these indicators are aggregated into a composite risk score that you see at the left of this panel, just next to the country names and ISO codes. The composite score is a relative rank score, which gives a holistic view on the long-term and short-term aspects of country risk. We express it in quintiles from 1 to 5, where 1 is best and 5 is worst. In my next video, I will apply this framework to the biggest 22 oil price losers, with a focus on a few key players, starting with the least risky, Canada, Norway and the US, and then exploring the riskiest cases, such as Venezuela and Libya, and concluding with Iran and Russia, which are both focal points for investors because of recent geopolitical events. That's all for today. If you would like more information about S&P Capital IQ's Country Risk Intelligence and Surveillance Panel, please contact us using the information on the screen and keep a lookout for our future credit risk videos and webinars on our website. Again, this is Marcel Henriks and thank you for watching.